This is Twit. Let's do this show. Let's talk about <laughs> Windows because there was kind of a big announcement uh, mm -hmm. Satya Nadella uh, put forth and it is time to do a shake-up, <laughs> a reorganization yeah. at Microsoft. Uh, no one's throwing any CEOs to the curb or anything like that. It's not that level of shake-up, but um, certainly some oh, restructuring. Well. Well, I guess, yeah, you know, I, yeah, then again, tell, tell us about well, it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to think. I, honestly, I'm, I, I think there's more story here than we know so far, because when I look at this, this, re, this reorg, and I should just say for, at a high level, involves Microsoft creating what they called a new organization, which is kind of an interesting word, uh, called Microsoft AI. That reports directly to Satya Nadella. It is uh, led by former uh, co-founders of uh, an AI company called Inflection. And uh, one of whom is the, I guess, the, the CEO of that business or whatever we're going to call this organization. Uh, the other one of whom is the other co-founder uh, and former chief scientist. Um, these are not... My, I, these are not people from Microsoft. No, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think I mean, this is an acquisition disguise of a reorg. Yeah. So, right. Maybe a mini version of what could have happened with open AI where uh, Sam Altman had been deposed and everyone said, we're leaving. And Microsoft said, well, welcome to Microsoft. And, the, right. and that might have happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, that could be. Uh, I, I just find it interesting that, it isn't more of a mix of Microsoft people and these new people. Yeah, I think um, it there will are, be. I just think this is early days that that they've managed yeah. to to basically recruit out the leadership of Inflection, who are also right. drivers behind DeepMind, uh, yep. which I think is That's a very right, we had, look. OpenAI is the was the gutting of Google Brain. Mm -hmm. This feels like the gutting of DeepMind, and DeepMind. Well, we always think of it as the Go company. They're the guys who cracked Go. That's not the important thing they're working on. <laughs> right. The, That's right. the important thing is Alpha Fold. They, they, they've yeah. largely solved protein folding for the medical industry and have open sourced it, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and so it's like we're in the midst of a medical transformation from the ability of the software to do protein folding calculations that basically were impossible any other way. Oh. And to the point where we even have trouble <laughs> I mean, validating what they've done. Right. But I mean, okay, but I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to understand how this works within Microsoft. You know, right, it's a right. very, yeah, I, I think it I was don't... just a lucky grab. You got two incredible rock stars that want to come on board, yeah. take a, Okay, but so, but obviously there is a, uh, you know, some set of uh, employees and executives at Microsoft who are already, were, were already leading the AI charge there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just find this interesting. I'm, I'm curious how this kind of plays out. Plus, yeah. I feel like the description of who goes where is somewhat incomplete at this time. So, for example, everybody, pro well, most people hopefully probably know that Microsoft CTO Kevin Scott was, you know, personally responsible for bringing together open AI and Microsoft and starting yeah. that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, he's been rewarded for that be, by being named executive vice president of AI <laughs> in addition to his job as, you know, just being CTO generally of Microsoft and has been and is still is apparently uh, re responsible for Microsoft's overall AI strategy. But that itself creates a very strange dynamic because the person who is directly responsible for Microsoft's AI strategy is not in charge of their AI business. And the person who is does not report to him. He reports directly to Satya Nadella. Um, As and, and I guess Kevin this, Scott. The, I'm sorry, uh, well, no, I meant the, the guy from uh, DeepMind. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. Suleiman, uh, Mustafa Suleiman. Mm -hmm. So... You, you've got this, it's it's interesting, right? Now, we already know about things like Copilot and uh, and where Copilot is in Bing and Edge and elsewhere and Microsoft 365 and Windows, et cetera. That team is moving into Microsoft AI and will report to that new person. Um, there is a Gen AI team uh, that was separate that will also move into that business and report to Mr. Suleiman. Um no word about Windows, nothing there. Although they mentioned that Rajesh Jha, who is responsible for uh, the experiences and de devices division or business or whatever we want to call that, uh, which is oversees Microsoft 365 and Windows, 
Um, he's continuing in his position and will partner closely with this new team on Copilot for Microsoft 365. No word on, on Windows. Although, you know, again, uh, or I, I, as we've said in the past, I should say, you know, Copilot on Windows is just another front end for Copilot that has some Windows specific stuff, but that's not particularly interesting. But I, I, I find it interesting that they did not mention Windows. And yeah, I think you're hitting on the big part here, uh, Paul, that this isn't about front ends, this is about back ends. Yes. And so OpenAI is a back end that Azure is wrapping. And now this could easily be a totally different back end. This could be, you know, derived from the DeepMind yeah. generative models. Or, yeah, or, it, right. Uh, well, I mean, and I look at the relationship they have with Mistral now as well yep. as another back end option. Well, I think, look, that kind of diversification is smart, <laughs> right? Um, I think a lot of people, you could be all in on this, be very excited for Microsoft's direction with AI, but you still should look at this open AI thing and say, wow, this is, um, a lot of eggs in one basket you know yeah. the future so of the company they seem to be getting more served. baskets now and they're keeping them separate yeah. from each other which i think yeah is which is probably smart right yeah and and i should i should know too they were very specific that uh we're continuing this uh open ai relationship which uh, nadella described as the most strategic and important partnership that microsoft has right i mean duh but it's it's always nice to have that spelled out mm -hmm. um I don't know what to make of this. I even when Microsoft first announced what was then called Bing Chat about a year ago, February, I think it was February, January, whenever that was. Um, there was some description. I think it, it was probably. Uh, it doesn't matter who said it, but there was some description that you know we have this Open AI Chat GPT technology that's kind of the foundation. But we're we're you know Microsoft described like they were McDonald's like they're adding some secret sauce on top of it and that secret sauce included such things as uh, Bing search results for the internet stuff and then they wouldn't talk about the rest of it right um, okay <laughs> but I, I we can debate whether pure open AI chat GPT or Microsoft's kind of flavor of it is better whatever that means et cetera et cetera more accurate whatever it is uh, I guess we could just have that discussion but. I, I, it was, I don't know. I, I, I've always been a little nervous about that relationship with open AI. And I wonder if this doesn't, isn't the, the, it's not the start, but a big step toward trying to diversify and make sure that nothing I think bad it is. happens there. And I think there's lots of reasons for them to do it. Yeah. Um, not the yeah. least of which is that they're being heavily scrutinized for their relationship with open AI. Yes. And right. so one of the ways right. you make it less threatening is say, we have a lot of relationships. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but even if it did end up being restricted, they have alternatives. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, we'll see. I, I, I feel like there's always this weird thing that can happen with not just Microsoft, any big company, where one day there's a couple of people on stage, and then the next day things happen, and the next event there's different people on stage. You know, so as re, as soon as build in May, we might see some of these people maybe for the first time at a Microsoft mm -hmm. event representing Microsoft, right? And uh, and then six months from then, we'll see. We'll see if it's the same. I, I'm I'm very curious about this. Uh, and, uh, you know, they don't, they're not presenting it as a reorg. It's a reorg, right? I mean, very much as a reorg. Um, when you, Especially when you consider that AI is the future of Microsoft, explicitly stated. And now we have a new Microsoft AI business. That's yeah. our organization, I mean, they, as they call it. The opening line on the PR piece is they he's joining to to lead Copilot, and I would argue that's yeah. a great way to solve a very impractical problem, which is that a year ago he told all these different product teams go make a Copilot. Well, now they have, and it needs to be rationalized. Yeah, and and bringing in a, effectively an external actor to do that rationalization is one way to defeat the political problem that is rationalized. Yeah, and it, it's it may be a way to trim back on some of the. Uh, the co-pilot fat, mm. <laughs> you know, well, right? there's too much. You know, plenty of that is repetitive. Like the good news about what he requested to do is everybody experimented and you're going to find some great experiments, but you're also going to find a lot of derivative work. And so, yes. you know, nobody wants yep. 200 co-pilots, even if 200 exist. Really, arguably, exactly, we want exactly. one. And they keep making gestures like there's going to be one while continuing to announce more. So right, right. Uh, maybe... Mustafa's the guy that can actually line all this up.
I we we're going to find out. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I well, I mean, there have been other uh, acquisitions that have led mm. to big uh, executives coming in and not lasting a long time mm. necessarily. Or not, not sometimes wrong. people, yeah, well, people get. I, put, I mean, I look at poor Miguel Diacaza, and I have nothing. You know, Miguel's crying all the way to bank. He's fine. But one of the first missions when he joined Microsoft was to rationalize XAML. And that yeah. was almost an impossible task, which I was going to say, I, I, did they succeed at that? I, mm, <laughs> I today, that Well, anymore. they did, but I don't think it was Miguel in the end. But I would argue the rationalization of XAML is Maui. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I, you're probably right. It's just that, unfortunately, Maui is... In the words of a fish called one of the smallest freaking province of Microsoft, and you know, yeah, I don't but know that that wasn't going to change the fact that the it wasn't going to be better fragmented. So they have that's at least that, no, at, that, at least got everybody working together. That is true, more or less. So yeah, I, it's uh, not it's not as big and important to play. But I mean, the other the other side of this is this is also very much a Gatesian playbook. Keep yeah. shuffling the cards. Do not let empires be built. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I sure. I mean, I, 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 I hundred percent agree. Uh, some of the co-pilot creep needs to be reined in. I, there's a, you, you don't have to follow this industry at all to kind of already have a feeling of almost AI fatigue just mm -hmm. this quickly. Right. Um, and that maybe this stuff needs to be corralled a little bit and, and simplified and we'll see, but, uh, yeah, I do feel like we were on a path to a, a new co-pilot every week for 2024. And maybe that's too much. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 and it is too much. It, it is there's too much, already right. too sorry. many. <laughs> yeah, it is too much. Right. Um, and so whatever strategy you've got to take to find a way to make it easier for all of us to consume the thing we want to consume. I mean, yeah. what would be worse than to be typing into the wrong co-pilot? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I laughed. That's actually it's hilarious. But I think that's how the, term the, the Terminator movies start that way. Yeah, um, exactly it. Yeah. Yep. I yep. meant the world. I, I meant my Minecraft world, not the whole world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like when you send an email to the wrong people and they're like, you know, this is yeah. work, right, Bob? Uh, I don't know yeah. what those sexy pictures were all about, but uh, maybe you didn't mean to send it out to the group. Uh, yeah. I, you could, yeah, you could do some real damage. Um, hmm. I mean, I I can't help but think about the Windows end of this for me, and I guess there is no Windows end. I mean, um, we, we're still in that same holding pattern where the industry is trying to sell us on MPUs, but there is nothing that takes advantage of MPUs that anybody cares about. Right. In fact, there's almost nothing at all that takes advantage of it anyway. And uh, we still haven't seen anything that, you know, changes that. I mean, there's been some rumors around blah, 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 whatever happening later this year, but... Um, if so, all this does is make background blur and paint or photos slightly faster than it is now, that's not going to be good enough, right? Because yeah. actually this stuff works fine right now. Yeah, the uh, MPUs that work right now are in your phones. There's nothing happening in operating systems near as I can tell. Even on the Mac side, really. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.